Hi everyone, I hope you're well. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a composite photograph with smoke. In my head, it works really well. I've got the amazing Lisa and Tom helping me, and what I'm going to be doing is stitching together 10 or 15 images to hopefully create one final epic photograph. Fingers crossed it works. So the idea behind this photograph is to stitch together 10 or 15 still images to create one final photograph. It's a very similar idea to a photograph which I took of my friend Demi, where we threw the veil out in lots of different directions and were in the exact same location in the exact same place for this photograph. But this time, rather than using veils, we're going to use smoke. So in my head, this looks really cool. We just need to see if it's gonna work out that way. So what I'm going to be doing first of all is asking Lisa and Tom to stand here and I'm going to get my base image. The base image is going to consist of a speed light behind them both and then we're going to introduce some smoke and the great thing is that once I've got that base image we don't actually then need Lisa or Tom in the rest of the photograph so they can go and go and have a sit down but the important thing is we get that base photograph right and then we can add in the others later the other key thing to mention if you're going to attempt to do a photograph like this is that you have to have your camera on a tripod because the images have to have the same base all the time so that means I don't want the camera to move I also don't want to change my camera settings either because when we stitch everything together I need the images to be consistently the same so what we're going to do first of all is just get our setup done for the base exposure. Okay then Lisa and Tom, so I'm going to bring you over here please. We'll put you about here I think. So I'm going to shoot this photograph on my Sony A9 on my Sony 16 to 35 2.8 lens. The reason that I'm on this lens is because I want this photograph to be a very wide focal length. So I'm going to go to 24 mil I reckon. So at the minute it's just a test shot to see my settings with no smoke. So I'm at f4.5 at 200, ISO 500. So that, that's okay as a base. What I'm now going to do is introduce a speed light behind Lisa and Tom. So I'm gonna use my Godox V860 and I'm gonna put on the MagSphere as well. The MagSphere is going to spread the light out, which for smoke is going to be quite a nice thing. It's gonna give me a wider area of smoke. So let's just put this behind them. I'm gonna place this probably about 10 foot behind, I would say, as a kickoff. The important thing to say is that I'm placing this behind Tom. The reason being is that the light that comes out of this could blow out the veil if I'm not careful. So I want to place that behind Tom because it's less likely to blow out any detail. Now, if I can ask Lisa, you can get really close to Tom if that's okay. So this is gonna be all about the composition being really, really symmetrical. So we're gonna move you both one step that way if that's okay. That's perfect. You two are now in the perfect position. So once I've got the settings dialed in, I'm then going to put my lens into manual focus so that I can't change it. Yeah, that looks decent. So what I'm now gonna do is just perfect the pose and then we're going to introduce smoke. And then when you're ready, if you want to just try and just fling that, that is good. So if anything, the speed light behind Lisa and Tom is a bit too strong. At the moment it's on an eighth power. I'm gonna drop it down to a 16. Yeah, so our base image will look good now. So what we're now going to do is introduce smoke behind Lisa and Tom. So if I can ask my good friend Tony to introduce the smoke, if that's okay, please. Perfect, thank you. So the important thing with this is that we keep on shooting to the point where we know we've got this shot right. And as the smoke goes up, Okay, Lisa, if you can just waft the veil, if that's okay, please. Beautiful, that looks good. Okay, so Tony's now just going to add in a couple of other veil shots. Again, we can always use afterwards. I'm just gonna add in a bit of smoke first. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Perfect, thank you, Tony. So what we're now gonna do is just take a couple of shots with the smoke in front of Lisa and Tom, and they can then go and sit down and we can fill in the rest without the need for them to be actually in the photograph. So thank you, Tony. So we're just gonna have a little bit of smoke running at the front. So again, Lisa and Tom, you'll stay nice and still for me. Yeah, that's good. That's cool. <laughs> Lisa, 
Lisa and Tom, if you were ever to point me <laughs> to get out of this, do just say, this looks cool on its own. Thank you. Okay, I think now we can actually say thank you to Lisa and Tom. This is the weird thing. We're going to keep on shooting, but we don't need the bride and groom to be in. So thank you very much, Lisa and Tom. You were amazing. Lisa, by the way, has had amazing makeup done by Georgia. The link will be in the description to Georgia's website if you want to have a look. But yeah, Lisa looks amazing. So thank you both very much. We'll just carry on. So we've got the base images now of Lisa and Tom, and we're now just going to swap over. So I'm going to ask my friend Tony now to press the shutter, just so I can go round and fill in the, the areas with smoke that I think uh, we need to do. So, Tony, if you can do the honours, please. And there we go. I think that is enough base images now. A huge thank you to Lisa and Tom and Tony for helping me create these images. This is still very much part one of the whole process. What I'm now going to do is stitch these images together in Photoshop. So over to me in Photoshop. Welcome to part two of this video. As I've just mentioned, this is very much a two part process and this is the second stage where we do all the editing. So what I'm going to do first of all is download the images into Photo Mechanic. We're then going to make our selections. We're then going to take those selections into Lightroom for a little bit of editing and then finally take those images into Photoshop and stitch them all together. And hopefully we'll end up with something quite cool by the end of it. So the first stage is to open up photo mechanic and download all the images from the shoot into there which as you can see I've done here so these are all the images which I took now I've already made my selections which you can see in this folder so these 23 images are the images which I've decided to use to make up the final image and what I've tried to do here is make a selection of images where the smoke gives good coverage around the whole of the frame so for example this image I will just use this area so the top right a bit of the middle there bottom left this will be the final version of Lisa and Tom but we've also got some various shots here where the veil is in different positions and I'm going to use each of those so I'm going to use that veil that veil and that one over the top of this veil as well. So that will just make the whole image just look a little bit more impactful. But the main thing here is that I've tried to select images where the smoke is, is covering the whole of the frame and say there's a bit of bottom right as well. And that's what you want to make sure. That's why at the end of the video, you saw me going round and trying to fill the frame with the smoke because I need all these bits of the jigsaw to combine together to give me the final image. So let's take these 23 images now into Lightroom. So we're now in Lightroom and here are our selections. Now I have subtly edited these. If I just select this one, for example, there's the raw file and this is what I've edited. And you can see what I've done here. I basically increased the shadows, but the main thing is pushed up the texture, clarity and dehaze just to give the image more punch. And I've done that with each of the selections. So I've not really done very much with them in terms of editing, but it's just going to give the images more punch and more clarity. So let's now open up these edited JPEGs in Photoshop. Now, I just want to add at this stage that I am not a Photoshop expert. In fact, to learn this process myself, I also had to watch YouTube videos. And I learned this process to make this video of Demi where we had the veils coming out from all different directions. So I'm going to show you what I know, but there may be better ways to do this. But at least this way does work. So we're in Photoshop now. And the first thing that we want to do is go to File scripts and load files into stack we then select the images we've just exported from lightroom so there they are so let's click ok and what photoshop is now going to do is place all those images one on top of each other as layers now, when you see the eye next to one of these layers, that means that that is the layer that we're looking at. If we untick the eye, it reveals the one underneath and so on. So what I'm going to do first of all is just untick all these eyes. Now, just because of the way that Photoshop imports these images as layers, the photographs that I want to be my base layers, in other words, the photograph of Lisa and Tom, are at the moment at the very top. So I'm just going to move those down. I think it will say like the one to five let's just put them at the bottom 
and I want one to be at the very bottom. So let's just put that there. So what we're looking at now is the base layer and this will be the version of Lisa and Tom that I use in the final photograph. But I obviously want to include more of the other layers around Lisa and Tom. So I want to show you how I do that now. So if we just click on layer three, for example, and click on the eye, we're seeing all of layer three, but I don't want to use all of layer three. I just want to use the veil over here on the left hand side. So to do that, I will click on add layer mask at the bottom with the option key held down. That is basically gonna make that layer invisible. And now by selecting a white paintbrush, I can paint back in areas of that layer that I want to reveal. So we'll do it like this. Now, if we go over an area like that with 100% opacity, obviously it doesn't look very good. So let's just undo that. What we can do though is lower the opacity of the brush. Let's go to something like 30%. And then when we paint over it, we're only seeing 30% of that layer. So it becomes much more realistic. Now, if you ever go over an area too far, for example, if we go over Lisa's arm like that, by changing the brush from white to black, that's going to do the opposite. So it's gonna just basically, and we need to put our opacity back to 100. We can then make the selection much more accurate because it's basically hiding layer three again if we do that. And you can see by doing a combination of this with all the different layers, we can start to build up something that looks really effective. Let's go up here, for example, to, let's look at layer 16. So if I want to add in this bit of smoke of layer 16, the top left corner. So again, on a map with the option key pressed down, we're going to add layer mask, and that's made that layer invisible. But let's use our white paintbrush again to paint in areas of that layer. There we go, like this. Now, obviously, when you do this for real, you're going to spend a lot more time being accurate and, and just really refining this. So let's look at another layer. Let's look at layer 12. Let's click on the eye. So I can see that I want to use this area of this layer. So same thing again. Option key pressed down. Add layer mask. With our white brush selected, we can just add in that area of smoke. And again, as I just said, if you don't want to use the opacity at 100%, you can just lower that, which is going to blend it even more realistically. Okay, and that is how you build it up. So what I'm now going to do is open up one that I prepared earlier, which is the final version that I'm going to use. So this that you're looking at now is the final PSD file for the image that I'm going to take into Lightroom. So if I just keep on ticking these eyes, you'll see how the image builds up. And you'll see the various areas of each of these layers that I've used. Some of the layers in the end I didn't end up using. But the majority I did, even though some of them were just a very small area. You can see there, just a tiny area. Now this looks pretty good already, but I do want to do more editing with it. So I'm going to take this into Lightroom. But I'm going to take it in as a JPEG. So I'm going to go to Layer, Flatten and then save this as a JPEG file and then gonna take it into Lightroom for the final edit. So we're now back in Lightroom and this is our final exported image from Photoshop. I don't really need to do very much really. It's obviously very much personal preference about where you take the image from here. All I know I want to do is just bring up the shadow slightly on Lisa and Tom. I'm gonna to do that by using my faces brush. This is part of my preset pack by the way. If you're interested in my presets, the link to buy them is in the description. That's just going to increase the exposure slightly and soften them down a little bit. And I'm also now going to add on a radial filter. I'm going to reset this because I'm going to just use this filter just to go around Lisa and Tom quite a lot. And then let's decrease the dehaze, but outside of the circle. So we're going to untick the invert square box. Again, it entirely to you what you do with the image once you get to this point. I mean, we could, if we wanted to, let's go to brushes. I could select my bokeh brush to make certain areas much more punchy. 
it's really up to you and there's no right or wrong about what you do with the image. But I'm really pleased with this. So here is the final version. Now I'm really pleased with this photograph because when I had the concept for this or the idea for this in my head, it was very hard to know exactly how it would end up looking, but I'm really pleased with the final result. So as always, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all, please do let me know in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. Thank you very much again for watching and I will see you next time.